as I said two days ago, I would need this lemma to do something a bit non-trivial, so I will write it down. Just on the side, we did this before, but... today is to try to understand a little more or pursue a little further in uh, slower diffuser always prevails that thing. So I will start with weak competition. We did this before. I will quickly run through that and, uh, and go on. All right, maybe I spend five minutes to go through those things, just to review, review. I know you have seen it yesterday twice, once in the morning, once in the afternoon, quickly, but let's do it anyway. Latka, Opera, Competition. So we have UT equals U1 of partial U plus U times A1 minus B1U minus C1D. Bt is B2 of partial V plus B A2 minus B2 U minus C2 V. And we have the new DU plus the new DV equals zero on the boundary. In the inertial value you x zero u zero x v x zero v zero as u and v are so similar. <coughs> Both are non-negative, not identically zero. Okay. And weak competition means the in interspecific co competition coefficients are weak. So this means B1 over B2 is bigger than A1 over A2 is bigger than C1 over C2. 
And also in this case, we have four constant steady states. Uh, that must be A1 over E1, E row, E row A2 over C2. And then we have used star V star. In this case, let me write it out carefully. That would be B1C2 minus C1B2. This is A1C2 minus C1A2. B1C2 minus C1B2. This is uh, C1A2 minus A1C2. Sorry. B1, A2 minus A1, B2. Okay. And we know that this, this is the one that is <coughs> globally asymptotically stable. In other words, whatever you use 0, V0, our solution always goes to this one. And that's the That's the background, regardless of D1, D2. So this one has nothing to do with D1, D2. Any D1, D2, you have the same result. This is independent. This is independent of D1, D2. All right. So the story changes when we put in spatial inhomogeneity. So I want to do that here. So we have ut equals d1 Laplacian u plus u m1x minus d1u minus c1v vt equals d2 Laplacian v plus d M2x minus B2U minus C2V. And we have the same thing, boundary condition. And the initial value is the same. Bigger than zero, but never identity zero. Dx to zero. Same thing, V0, okay, for those of you who went to the yesterday's colloquium, you know the story a little bit now, but I want to repeat that here, I suppose not everybody went, bigger than M1x over M2x given as C1 over C2. This holds for all x in omega. Closure. And this is the condition says it's a weak competition. So we're going to assume that. Then the story here the way to prove this is by cooking up the Yapanov function. It's very simple, very easy. Uh, maybe I should write down. I, I guess I didn't write down the Yapanov function last time, so maybe I should write it down this time, and you can verify that. So the Lyapunov function here, let's say u v is a solution, but then this is the function of t is defined to be the integral of omega v1 u minus u star minus u star. This is my u star and v star. U 
you start a lot of you over you start. But C2, sorry, I got it backwards. I was telling you how important those co coefficients are. The important ones are B2C1. This is B minus B star minus B star log is symmetrical. B over B star. This is integrated over the x, of course. And a good thing about this is that, so this is a claim. I will leave the claim to you to verify. When you differentiate this with respect to t, it's always less than or equal to zero. And if it's zero, the equality holds if and only if the solution uv equals u star v star already. So you always have a strict inequality if this is different from u star v star. So this is always decreasing. And there's a few, a few other things you need to check to prove that actually this happens, of course, but all pretty simple. So I will not do that. I will just leave it to you to verify. So that's the constant coefficient case. The variable coefficient case. We don't have any coefficient. That's right. Regardless of the Fichte coefficients. I know what you're thinking because I thought about that. Yeah. So energy terms. This is different from the usual energy, say in the ginsburg landau sense or whatever, because this this is another thing about lot of Volterra. It looks simple. But Lotka Volterra doesn't have variational structure. If you if you if you if you're willing to do something more complicated, if you change this one to square, 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 it looks more complicated. This is much easier. Why? Because this one has a variational structure. It's a, it, this is closer to the, the so-called Ginsburg Landau without magnetic field. Much easier, as a matter of fact. So, this Diablo functional doesn't work in the strong competition case. It's only for the weak competition case. And this Diablo functional doesn't look so intuitive either. So, uh, quite a few things here are actually Simple, looks simple, but non-trivial. One of them is this one, of course. Only works for a weak competition case. So somewhere, improving this, you need this condition. However, D1, D2, they will come into the proof, but never matters. It's a good point, because uh, I'm sure other people, some other people will think about some, 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 some error in this one, because uh, there's no D1, D2. Yeah, it's independent of D1. Whatever D1, D2 is, no problem. Okay. So the constant coefficient case is easy, independent of D1, D2. The, the variable that is spatially inhomogeneous case, I'm going to write it down now. So this was First part, d1, d2 small implies, let me call this one star, as many stars. Star has a unique positive steady state. Positive means both components are positive. This means coexistence. 
uh, positive steady steady, which is globally asymptotically stable. Yeah, big deal because same. Two d1 d2 large implies star. Same thing. Same conclusion. Again, big deal. Well, actually, it is a big deal. The reason is the proof is very. It's not trivial. So I want to outline the. I'm, I'm not going to do the proof today. I won't. But I want to outline the proof. It's a very interesting proof. Made use of the monotone flow theory again. Well, maybe not quite in this. Yes, it does. So it does. OK, so the outline of the proof. I should say what, who proved these things. And the one is due to so here's the reference. It's easier now to give a reference than a few days ago because uh, all right. So one is is proved in Hudson Yunlo and Mishaiko. This is in JDE 2005. Two is there's a similar proof as due to the MO. It's never published. So this is a private. Now this outline of the proof. First step is to show that theta d1 zero and zero theta d2. Let's say one outline one. Ah, oh, sorry, I, I should say. One. This is first step. The two semi-trivial steady states are unstable. <clears throat> then the monotone theory, flow theory guarantees us there exists a stable positive steady state. That is a coexistent steady state. At least one. The third step is to show that every stable, sorry, every positive steady state, that is every coexistent steady state, every positive steady state must be stable. From that, you conclude there is only one. Again, why? Because the, if there are two, monotone, monotone flow theory will tell you between the two, because they're all ordered, there are two, between the two, there is an unstable mm -hmm. contradiction. Now, improving every positive steady state must be stable for d1, d2 small, or for d1, d2 large, you need to prove an extra, info, extra, extra, uh, you need to obtain more information about the steady state. So you actually show that, so to, to, prove, the, to prove this step, to prove this step, you need to show that uh, the, solu the, 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 the positive, steady, positive steady state
for T1, T2 small will look like M1, M2. Oh, sorry, take it back. Will look like what it's supposed to be. So what is it? There would be point-wise M1x, C2 minus C1, M2x, divided by B1, C2 minus C1, B2. The second one is point-wise. In one. In two, if this is two, this is for D1, D2 small, right? Two is for D1, D2 large. In two, the outline is the same, except at the last stage, in proving this, you need to show this is similar to, instead of point-wise, M1x, M2x here, it's M1 average, like a constant. C2 minus C1, M2 average, divided by B1, C2 minus C1, B2. The second one is similar. You use this information to show every positive steady state must be stable locally. So the, the proof is fairly long and uh, fairly lengthy difficult to do in one hour if you want to see all the details. So I'm not going to do that. But just to tell you the story, the story is that D1, D2 large or D1, D2 small situation is similar to before. So now, what happens when D1, D2 is not large, it's not small? So this is a result, I think it's a beautiful result due to yellow. But this is in 2006, in JEE. He showed the following, here. There exists B star between 0 and 1 such that, sorry, I'm jumping ahead. I want to do this using a special case. So instead of star I will be dealing with, I would make a simpler one, that is this one. Ut equals d1 the plus in u plus u times mx minus u minus c1 d. Dt equals d2 the plus in d plus d mx minus b2 u minus d. So if you want, later I, what I'm going to do, I'm going to drop B2, C1, the, the sub-indices 2 and 1, because there's no, B, no B1, C2 anymore. So if I do that, so it's okay. And then I have the mu U, the mu V, 0 on the bottom. The yellow theorem reads as follows. There exists the B star, B lost to 0, 1, such that. Oh. I want to say this is a special case, a very special case of yellow theorem, because the full theorem I, I won't be able to prove here today in, in a short time. But I will prove uh, a weaker version. But it's enough to show, it's quite different, enough to show the essence of this, the spirit of this thing, such that for all B, 
between 1 and b star fixed, there exists the c star between 0 and 1. Presumably c star is small, so I would just say small. Such that for all c between 0 and c star, the system star has sorry the steady state theta b one zero is because I want to show that the uh, u wipes out v. So theta b one zero is globally asymptotically stable. This means u wipes out v, right? Regardless of inertial value, any inertial value, non-negative, non-zero. So this basically says, if b is close to 1, c is close to 0, this prevails. Oh, I, I, I'm sorry, I haven't finished. There's no d1, d2 here. There is actually a d1, d2. This is globally asymptotically stable for some d1, d2. Okay. This is not a full theorem because I'm only going to produce a pair of c1, d1, d2 for you, or maybe a little more than a pair. In Reynolds' theorem, he has a full classification of all these d1, d2. If you, if you were in my colloquium yesterday, that was the picture of the red region. It was quite complete. All right. Uh, I will. So this is, this is different from the constant coefficient case. In the constant coefficient case, you see here, once you have m1 equals m2, the condition becomes one of the weak condition becomes one over b bigger than one, right? Bigger than c, one, right? Because m1, m2 are identical. So the so the quotient, so the quotient here is just one. So this simply means weak competition simply means b is less than b is less than one, c is less than one. So as I said, I will write this one as B, I'll write this one as C. Okay. Anyway, that shows the difference between the two. So now I will, I will start proving it. I have about half an hour. That should be enough. Okay. I will erase this. So to prove that, the proof consists of a few, uh, I mean, let me first again outline the proof. First proof, first step is to show that theta b10 is locally stable for b in that range, for some b1, b2, for bc in that range, right? And zero theta b2 is unstable. Second step is to show. So once you have one is stable, one is stable here. Theta b one is stable. Theta b one zero is stable. Theta d two zero, zero theta d two is unstable. So the first step. This is theta b one. This is theta d two. This is stable. This is unstable. We're going to show that. That's the first step. Then we're going to show there's no coexisting steady state in between. Then the monotone flow theory says everything goes here. Yeah. 
this just a C and D, right? <coughs> so, in the equation, one are you? The, 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 the C one is just a C in the C one. That's correct. Just so, C, B. So this is C, this is B. Because there's no B1, B2, C1, C2 anymore. No sub-indices, <coughs> just that. So the idea is to show, first, that this is stable, this is unstable. Second, no coexistence in between. And that's enough. Okay, so I will use that. But I will also tell you what B star is. B star is related to is the infimum of integral m over integral theta d, the d positive. Okay. Okay. So we know this is going to be infimum. It's the mi it's minimum. Same thing, because it's assumed. This is less than one. Okay. It's bigger than zero. This is the definition of B star. So, monotonicity seems to be very important in your argument. Which one is monotonicity? Monoton monotonicity is the maximum principle. Yes, you're talking yes, so, about. Yeah. So, you need some condition for the nominee, at least a condition for the nominee. Yes. It, as long as it's a competition type or cooperation type, you have. But competition type, cooperation type, works for any, any, any n by n matrix, n by n system. Competition, only two. Only two by two. Because two by two competition, you can, you can change it to a cooperative system, to a cooperation system. Let's go on. So yeah. you said that the part of the steady state is close to the something there, and the statement of the result of the passing door and the mechanical. Sorry. In what sense do you say it's close? This one. Yeah. What Converges. If D1, D2 goes to infinity, the steady state goes to this one. Any steady state. In any sense, Once you have that in any sense, because the nonlinearity is bounded, regularity theory tells you you have that convergence in the C2, classical sense. I don't understand where it says that. If it is a positive. This one. This is a constant. There's no problem. Oh, upper one. Uh, the upper one, sure. At infinity. Okay. Yeah. So, you mean that in the. Uh, some. The yeah, part of the state is, uh, should be solution of this LST equation. Correct. And co close to the some this function. That is not a solution anymore. That's not a solution anymore. Yes. So, in the neighborhood of that function, you can find always a steady state, you mean? Yes. In the L-infinity neighborhood. Yes, yes. Yeah. Nothing to. This is nothing to. And that's why, there's one other reason. One, is slightly more difficult to handle, messier than two. Two is easier. But even two is not easy. But two is much easier. Anyway. And also the information you get from, from two is easier to use than the information you get from one. Because this piece of information is very important in improving that. So uh, anyway, it's a, it's a complicated thing. And I don't want to do it here one of, for one of the reasons, or just one of the reasons is that it doesn't show any difference. It's the same as before. It's no, nothing surprising. So, it's something more surprising. I mean, this, is a, this gives us something a little bit surprising. It's different. That's why I want to show it to you. Because the main thing is not to, you know, I, to me, the main thing for this school is to get people motivated. And if you're interested in this one, you will read it yourself. You don't need me to teach you, right? Because these are simple stuff anyway. So, so for me, the main thing is to get you interested in it. If you're interested in this one, great. I, I consider myself successful. 
but otherwise, no, sorry. Okay, so I want to show, so, any more questions? Now I want to show that uh, theory. We do what we always do, linearize, right? Before I, before I go on, I, I also want to say one other thing. That is, what happens if, you're, if your B is below B star? The answer is very simple. No chance of theta D1 to wipe out. You know, because this one becomes unstable. Almost, this is not a proof of that, but almost. Okay. Then you rise the system at theta D1. What do we have? We have elliptic system. So we have, so in linearized elliptic system, <coughs> the steady state system at theta d1 zero, we have b1 Laplacian by one plus n minus two theta d1 <coughs> by one. minus C theta D1 by 2. Right? <coughs> the other one drops. Plus lambda by 1 equals zero. B2 Laplacian phi 2 plus N minus B theta D1 by 2 one drops, so I, okay, so this is plus lambda by two equals zero. Then I have the phi the mu phi one equals the mu phi two equals zero on the top. Is that right? Okay. So I want to show say that the one is a zero is uh, I want to look at this one, see, show that is uh, stable. We do the same thing as we did yesterday. Suppose phi 2 is non-zero, right? This implies lambda is bigger than mu 1, n minus b, theta d1, d2, bigger than or equal to. Uh, I guess I need, sorry, I need to choose D1, D2 first. Excuse me. So, I want to go back to B star. So here is the, here is the B. D1, roughly D1. D, let's say D. So here's the, here's 1, right? What is B? Uh, sorry, what is this, this quotient? Let me, let me, let me, let me, yeah, yeah. So I want to, so I want to plot this graph. I know this is always less than 1. And it is 1 at 0, and it is 1 at infinity. So this is the curve, like that, right? And B star is the minimum. This is the B star, right? OK, now I have B is bigger than B star. So B is here. That is my B. So you see, I, this one cuts this uh, graph in, say, a finite number of intervals. Let's just pick any one. Let's just pick this one. I call this one D lower star, I call this one D upper star. 
and I want my D, D I want my D1 to be in the lower star and the upper star. Okay. So this is the range for my D1. D1 is anything in between. If D1 is, any, uh, is, is, is here, what do I have? I have integral m over integral theta d1 is going to be bigger than uh, bigger than b star. Less than b. Right? Is this? Yeah, this is less than b. Bigger than b star, less than b. So, I want to use this inequality. That means I have m minus b theta d1 is negative. Okay. This is how I choose my D1. I will choose D2 now. So, is this clear? Yeah. So I. What I need is I need this one to be positive, right? If, if it is positive, this one, I want, it to, I want the stability, so I want it to be positive. So this is what I want. I don't have it yet. I want to choose my D2 for this, to achieve this. How do I do that? I know the integral here, integral m minus b theta d1 is negative. So I'm going to use, so that m there, the m here is positive, but this is not going to be positive anymore. The integral is negative in particular, right? So this falls in, I want to use this case, this lemma, this case, right? So. If the integral is negative, the, this integral is negative, this implies what? The principal eigenvalue with this weight, lambda 1, m minus b theta d1, is what? If this is negative, this is positive. As this indicates, right? And the mu 1 is positive. Mu 1 lambda is positive for all lambda in here. So, now I choose my D2 to be something I choose my D2 to be something bigger than 1 over lambda 1 n minus B theta D1. If this is the case, this implies 1 over D2 is less than lambda 1, m minus b theta d1, right? Okay, so 1 over d2 is my lambda here, as always. And the mu 1, this one equals what? This one is the, is the same thing here. Mu 1 lambda. Well, it's not quite the same thing. Uh, uh, the D2, I want to divide through. If I divide through D2, if I divide, the, divide, if I divide D2 through, so from the second equation, what do we have? The second equation becomes Laplacian phi 2 plus 1 over D2 m minus b theta d1 by 2 plus lambda by 2, oh, sorry. Uh, the lambda, lambda, uh, okay, d2. Equals e. This is my lambda. What over d2 is my lambda? Well, I get, I get too many lambdas, I'm sorry. What over d2 is the one there? Okay. So if I if I choose if I choose D two bigger than this number, that means one over D two is less than this number. That means 
this value is going to be bigger than or equal to mu1. The corresponding mu1 of this, so this, sorry, this part is not, not, not maybe not quite right, but anyway, I have lambda over d2 is bigger than what? It's bigger than n minus b uh, is bigger than, sorry, I have lambda over d2 bigger than uh, it's bigger than or equal to mu1 n minus b theta b1 right if, if i2 is not zero and this one is going to be bigger than zero okay so the code, so the, this may be i need to divide it by d2 times but anyway i have this one this is true if d2, if lamp, if 1 over d2 is, is less than, if 1 over d2 is less than this one. That means if d2 is bigger than this one, bigger than 1 over that. So here is my d1, d2. d1 is between d lower bar and d upper bar. And d2 is chosen so that D2 is bigger than uh, 1 over lambda 1 n minus b theta d1. So this is this is the, the range for d1, d2 in order to have lambda here being positive. All right. So, I will erase this now. No. That lambda one. So I, that's why it's very confusing. I'm the, I, I apologize for that. The lambda one there is the lambda one here. This lambda 1 is the principal eigenvalue associated with the weight m. Remember how that was defined? That was defined, lambda 1 m <laughs> was defined to be the infimum of uh, gradient psi square over integral of m psi square taken over all h1 function with m psi squared bigger than zero. That was how we defined the principal. But that's how we find the principal eigenvalue. That was the lambda one. And remember the picture we drew on this one was that in the third case, this is my parameter lambda. Since lambda one is positive, Zero is always a principal eigenvalue, so we get graph like that. Mu one, mu one lambda, is concave in lambda, right? That that was what we proved. So it's always like that. So in the third case, so this is lambda one m, and therefore when your lambda is bigger than lambda one m, that's here. Mu one is negative. If it's less than lambda one m, it is positive. That's here. And that's the one we, we used here to produce the local stability. All right. So in this range, we have, well, I haven't quite finished. I only did, the, I only, we only looked at the case when phi 2 is non-zero. If phi 2 is non-zero, the lambda is an eigenvalue here. Uh, I should have used maybe a different one. <coughs> Instead of lambda, I should use maybe, I don't know, beta. So beta. So anyway, the eigenvalue is bigger than this one. Uh, 
and that is bigger than zero. This one may be different from from that from 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 uh, from, from the other one by by a, by a factor of d two, but d two is positive anyway, so it's okay. So that's when phi two is non-zero. If phi two is zero, the proof is the same as before. If phi two is identically zero, we get this term drops up. Then we, we are dealing with the first equation. Martian phi one plus n minus two theta b one phi one plus lambda phi one equals zero. So lambda is bigger than the mu one of m minus two theta b one b one. Right? say that d1, d1, and we are going to compare this one to m1, n minus theta d1, d1. This, this function is smaller than that, because theta d1 is positive. Therefore, we have strict inequality, bigger. And this one is zero, because theta d1 is a solution of d1, the Laplacian theta d1 plus n minus theta d1, theta d1 equals zero. So this becomes a positive, this is a positive solution, so this becomes, uh, so if you write it in this form, <coughs> plus zero, theta d1 equals zero, the first eigenvalue is zero. That's this one. So this is how you show the local stability, and as I said earlier, you need this one in a crucial way. All right. But so far, if you notice, C has not come in yet. C only came in here. But in our theorem, we require C to be small. C only came in here. So in this part, in the local stability of theta d1, 0, C doesn't matter. This holds for every C between 0 and 1, including 1. This, this is true. So local stability has nothing to do with C. C comes into the second step. Where is the second step? The second step So we first linearize that, and the next thing we're going to show is that for C small enough, no coexistence steady state. That is, no positive steady state. That's the next step. That step will take a while. So I think I want to apologize. I don't have that much time to finish that. I will postpone that to tomorrow. But today, I will just focus on the, on the discussion of the linearizability of theta d1, 0. For the remaining time, I want, to talk, I, want to, I want to discuss a little bit about what happens when b is less than b star. This is what b bigger than b star. So what we, we, have, we, have, what we have proved here is the following. For any, for any, for any, for any d1 in this region, Theta d1, 0 is stable if your d2 is large enough. It doesn't have to be too large. We have a, we have a, we have a range for that. And of course, this value depends on d1. But as long as d2 is bigger than that, so the theta d1, 0 is stable, locally stable. That's already different from what? From the constant coefficient case. Because constant coefficient case, for any d1, d2, u star v star, the coexistence steady state is globally stable. Therefore, none of these semi-trivial steady states can be stable at all. Okay. Now, what happens when b is smaller than b star? Yeah, that's too bad. I, 
I, I couldn't finish that because the argument is longer, the, the second part. But anyway, I will focus on the B less than B stuff. So what happens when B less than B stuff? I will just leave this one here, here is the rest. Talk about B less than B stuff. Also irrelevant things and I'll erase them. So what happens when B less than B star? The claim is beta B1 zero is always unstable. So for B less than B star, here's my B. Here, here the red line is, is the level of B of B, right? That's B. Now if, if our B is here, less than B star, then we always have so B less than B star. B less than B star means that B star is integral of M over integral of B1, theta B in Fimon, right? So this means B is less than integral M over integral theta B for any B. That is to say, M minus B, theta B, is always positive. We always have that. If that's the case, again, we come back here to study this one. What happens? If, if that's the case, let's look at the second equation first. The first equation can be handled in exactly the same way as we did before. The second equation says that now if phi 2 is different from 0, this means Sorry, now we want to prove the instability. So I want to produce a negative eigenvalue for lambda over there. So the negative eigenvalue that I want to produce, this is the candidate. That is to say, I have, uh, from the second equation, I want lambda to be mu 1 m minus b theta b. If the integral is positive, I just erased it. This one is always negative. This one is always negative. So I just set my lambda to be that. Then the second equation has a solution, phi 2, positive. Plug that into, phi, into the first equation, I have b1, a plus and phi. I need to solve this one. Plus m minus 2, say that b1, phi 1, plus lambda. Lambda is, is this one phi 1 equals c theta d1 phi, phi 2. So I need to invert this one. Just as we said yesterday. I need to invert the operator d1 Laplacian plus m minus 2 theta d1 plus lambda is mu 1 that. It's mu 1 m minus b theta d1. But in any case, this is negative. I need to invert this operator. It is invertible because this part, the eigenvalue, is always positive. Why? Because for this part, mu1, m minus 2, theta d1, this is going to be bigger than mu1, m minus theta d1. Because this function is smaller than that. Therefore, mu1 is small, it's bigger, right? And this is zero. We did that before. This is zero. Therefore, the eigenvalue for this operator has to be positive, all of them. Now, therefore, this eigenvalue, oh, there's a, this plus a negative number, so itself is invertible. Plus a negative number is not yeah, Of course, it's invertible because the eigenvalue for this part is positive. So this shows with lambda equals this one, under this condition, we can solve, we can, we can find that eigenvalue, which, which is precisely this one, negative eigenvalue. 
And that's enough to show. And that, that implies it's unstable. So basically, today what we have seen is that if B is bigger, if B is less than B star, there's no chance to produce anything different from before. Well, at least at theta B, one zero. If B is bigger than B star, then theta D1 zero becomes stable locally, at least for some D1, D2. What are these D1, D2 there? C is well irrelevant at this time. So tomorrow, we're going to see that for C small, no coexistence. And from that, we conclude this one is globally stable. So uh, again, I apologize. I, tomorrow we'll come back and uh, do this argument a little bit, a little bit again, because to ensure ensuring this is unstable, uh, the no, ensuring that no coexistence for C small under these assumptions, uh, we again need to use the eigenvalue consideration. So anyway, any more questions? Yeah, okay. We could, yeah, thank you.